Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Paruja Gohadakutta and we'll be discussing the 2G judgment which has come very recently in which A. Raja seems to have been exonerated. Paruja, the 2G judgment seems very strange because on a case where the Supreme Court has already opined that there was a violation of the basic principles of equity through which any government property should be alienated, namely in this case uh, the spectrum. This judgment seems to say that not only that criminal intent was not proven or the crime uh, evidence was not strong enough, but it seems almost to have given Raja a clean chit and blamed a whole bunch of people including lack of procedures in the Department of Telecom. You know, I was very, very disappointed by Justice O.P. Saini's judgment which was delivered on the 21st of December 2017. The main judgment runs into over 1500 pages. This is the CBI case pertaining to alleged irregularities in the allotment of second generation telecom spectrum. And this excludes of course uh, his other judgments in the case which was instituted by the enforcement directorate. You know, I think this judgment is deeply flawed. It gives a clean chit to 17 accused persons, including the former Union Telecoms Minister, Telecommunications Minister, uh, Andi Muthuraja. It includes former member of parliament belonging to the DMK, the Dravidam Munnetra Kajagam Kanimori, who also happens to be the daughter of the DMK Supremo Karunanidhi, and a whole host of others including former telecom secretary Siddharth Behura, including executives of the Reliance Anil Thurumai Ambani Group, Gautam Doshi, Surendra Pipara, Hari Nayar. It includes the promoters of Swan Telecom, Shai Dusman Balwa, Vinod Goenka, among others. You know, I, and there is, since this judgment, there's been so much noise. You know, Congress has said, we, are, we have been vindicated. Mr. Raja says, I was right. Everybody and his brother is talking about this judgment. I think it's quite important to demystify this judgment. And, and let's start from the very basics. What, after all, are we talking about? What is second generation electromagnetic telecom spectrum? It's thin air. You know that. At the end of the day, it's a scarce resource. Why? Because it's a finite resource. Across the world and also in India, it's allotted by the government two particular, four particular users and by particular companies. In this case, private mobile telecommunications company. This is a public property in as much as it's a scarce resource. Correct. And therefore it has to be alienated with proper procedures for public good. Correct. So, it, because it's a natural resource, because it belongs to the people of this the country, it has to be allocated and priced in a, in a transparent manner. Let's come to the basic issue, the policies. First come, first serve. Was this the appropriate policy to allocate a scarce resource? I would clearly say no. And this is where Justice Saini's judgment just sort of covers up the issues. It doesn't get into the basic issue that why should the government a lot a scarce national resource in this manner, in the manner in which cinema tickets are sold. Literally, you're first in the queue. The next part of the story is how even the first come, first serve process was subverted, was manipulated, was tweaked. And finally, comes the question of criminality. So I think the first part that we need to look at is though Justice Haini has given, has showered praise on the present uh, principal secretary to the prime minister, uh, Mr. Nipendra Mishra. And uh, Mr. Nipendra Mishra at that point of time happened to be the chairman of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. There's a very, very famous paper that he put out at that point of time, which made things a little ambivalent as to whether certain kinds of spectrum bands should be auctioned and whether it was okay to allot other bands on a first come, first serve basis. The ambivalence left a lot of scope for interpretation. Though subsequently, Mr. Mishra repeatedly told the court that no, he was not in favor of 
the manner in which the announcement took place, which is first come, first serve. And whatever Mr. Raja may say, the then Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, the then Finance Minister, the then Law Minister, all the bureaucrats, none of them approved this policy. It was his and he pushed it. So, in other words, in this intervening seven-year period, the market was growing at a very, very rapid pace. Now, under the circumstances, I don't think it can be under any circumstances be justified what Mr. Raja did. Today, Mr. Raja may claim, thanks to him, the, 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 the price of telecom services to ordinary consumers was low. But I think none of them can be justified. Because all this happened despite the fact that the Supreme Court, as you rightly pointed out, in February 2012, cancelled no less than 212 licenses, which were controlled by roughly 11, uh, sorry, 122 licenses controlled by roughly 12 corporate groups. You know, this is, of course, one could argue that the, the purpose of these two judgments are different. In the case of what the Supreme Court looked at, it is a question of whether the uh, license had been issued on the principles of equity and so on. Okay, let, let, let's go step by step. Let's first look at procedures. I've already argued, and you seem to be agreeing with me, that the first come first serve system was not the way you should have allocated the spectrum. But now come to the procedures. Having gone ahead with the the first come first serve procedure what did you do between march 2006 and the end of september 2007 in this period of time you had received somewhere in the region of about uh, well 575 applications now, clearly, there wasn't enough spectrum for everybody, and everybody knew that you couldn't. But how did you go about reducing the number of applicants? What you did, you kept quiet, and then on the 10th of January 2008, the Department of Telecommunications issues two press releases. The first press release advances the cutoff date to 25th of September, thereby eliminating many of the applications and reducing the number of applications to one, two, two. What happened that same day was even more pernicious and terrible. You issued another press release at 2.30 p.m. And what did you say? That you have time between 3.30 and 4.30 the same day to give in your proposal. Here were bank drafts running into literally thousands of crores which were materialized out of nowhere. Obviously, it means people had prior knowledge. But the short point is, you had followed a system which was corrupt to the core and it doesn't require a particularly intelligent person to understand. Now, here is further evidence on what you are saying. They had four parallel counters in which people were given the letters of indent. They had to collect it. And based on this letter, they had to rush to another place where the sequence determined what was called first to comply. That means who gave in the bank guarantees in what order to decide whether they would get the uh, spectrum or not. Now, the sad part of the whole story was even this whole system was completely done away with. For instance, the Supreme Court found that out of these 122 licenses, 85 applicants didn't even qualify for the licenses. Secondly, the existing licensee could not have more than 10% equity in the new applicant's share. Now, this too was subverted. And the most egregious example of that pertained to Swan Telecom Private Limited. How did this circumvent that process? The ADAG group, headed by Anil Ambani, invested 992 crores in this company, Swan, but through a convoluted route through fragment shares. Thereby claiming it was not in the equity, it was not an equity share, but the investment was an investor. Even the so-called inter se seniority was done away with to favor particular companies like Swan, like Unitec, like Videocon. 
at the expense of others, including Spice Telecom. Now, what was truly amazing was that this was not where it ended. I mean, as if this was not bad enough. What Mr. Raja did was that he bypassed the recommendation, he ignored the recommendation, not only of Manmohan Singh and Chidambaram and the then finance secretary, uh, 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 you know, Subha Rao and the then officer of the, of, of, of the, in the prime minister's office, Pulok Chatterjee. Incidentally, all of them have been castigated very strangely by Judge Sani. Also, he's been very, very harsh on uh, Mr. D.S. Mathur, who was telecom secretary who retired on the 31st of uh, December 2007, 10 days before the actual allocation took place, by which time Mr. Siddharth Behura had taken over charge as telecom secretary, the same person who had been environment secretary under Mr. Raja. But the short point that I'm making here is that an important condition, the license condition, was that you could not resell your equity for a three-year period. This was overruled by Mr. Raja. As a result of which, Etilisat paid Swan 3,217 3, crore rupees for 44.7% shares. Telenor paid Unitec 6,210 crore rupees for uh, equity stake of 67.3%. Tata Teleservices had a deal with Docomo of Japan that later went unstuck for very, very different reasons. But the short point is, here was procedures. Even if you assume that you go ahead with what I believe was a flawed first-come, first-serve system, you even tweak that system. You even messed around with those procedures. In fact, what happens is first-come, first-served becomes first to comply in terms of getting spectrum and as we know license is really not the issue spectrum is the core of the issue because spectrum was bundled with the license and therefore raja's argument that license can be given on first come first served but spectrum should be given on first to comply this is not a procedure which had been ever been followed this was a fig leaf to cover up the manner in which you allocated the scarce national resource let's come to another person who's been absolutely the target of the Congress party today. The then controller and auditor general of India, Vinod Rai. Now, interestingly, what happened, the report of the CAG, which was submitted on the 10th of November 2010, was leaked a few days earlier. It had become common knowledge. Mr. Raja had to put in his papers. The CAG put out a series of presumptive losses. The lowest one of which, which was somewhere not very close to what the CBI led, was a little over uh, 30,000 crores. It was to be, the CBI amount was 30,984 crores. The highest which attracted the media attention was 1,76,000 crore, which was like oh, $30 million. It attracted headlines. It was the, one of the world's biggest scams, if not the biggest scam, etc., etc., etc. But wait, Mr. Raja eventually had, was in jail. He was spent 15 months behind bars. Tani Moi, almost six months she spent behind bars. What was Vinod Rai's fault? That he said, this is a presumptive loss. What is a presumptive loss? A loss that is presumed. It is a notional loss. Money this that could have come to the government, but did not come to the government. So he became the villain of the piece, and he's still being made to be the villain of the piece. But what is exactly a presumptive loss? It's a notional loss. Yes, Mr. Kapil Sibyl, who was the then minister, he's right. It's a zero loss. Of course, there's zero loss. But this is money that could have come, but did not come. Now, why was Mr. Vinod Rai's position subsequently vindicated? After 2010, there have been no less than six rounds of auction of telecommunications spectrum. And the government has received commitment for 3,56,000 crores worth of funds in this deal. So then Mr. Vinod Rai is right. Maybe you don't agree with 1,76,000 crore, but certainly the government lost a lot of money. The argument that you're saying that, okay, if you hadn't given Spectrum at a, at a lower price, then you wouldn't have been able to give uh, telecom services at, at, a, at a throwaway price to everybody. Again, a fallacious argument. You cancel one year of the licenses. You re-auction. Despite all that, 
the prices continued to come down and they still have been coming down. So this had absolutely nothing with Mr. Raja's logic of giving away spectrum for a song, for inducting outsiders, so to say, people who had no connection with telecom, ostensibly to break a cartel. All of these arguments are completely fallacious. Well, honestly, we must also acknowledge that Justice Saidi is held to be an honorable judge and uh, we really do not seem to find what is the logic with which he blames everybody else. As you have said, all the officials who tried to stop this policy are castigated in different parts of the judgment. But the ones who led to the loss, and there is no question, as you yourself pointed out, the auction led to huge uh, accretion of money to the exchequer by virtue of the license licenses and spectrum being sold. And this loss, which is now not a presumptive loss, but a loss that can be seen, all of this is not, not considered as something for which Mr. Raja should be held accountable. Even if Mr. Saidi finds, Honorable Justice Saidi finds that he's not criminally accountable. And even but accountable. if the CBI has done a lousy job in prosecution, that doesn't make the Honorable Judge Saidi's judgment a good one. You know, there is one strange issue over here. Manmohan Singh, who certainly was, could be argued as above what happened in the 2G case, also didn't really stop it. He knew what was happening. He wrote various letters, but he didn't really stop this from happening, which he could have as Prime Minister. What explains this? You know, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh has gone on record telling journalists that he had nothing to do, uh, or he, he could not do anything about Mr. Raja's reappointment for the, a second term as telecom minister. And you know, all, all the muck is there thanks to the Radia conversations being leaked out. But this, Radia. yes, Neera Radia, that's right, the Neera Radia conversations. But I want to make a point which is important. The second UPA government was supported by 14 DMK MPs at one point of time. The number diminished later. So yes, it was a minority government. The Congress party didn't have uh, a majority. So yes, there were compulsions of coalition politics. But what people conveniently forget to mention is that during the period between May 2006 and May 2011, Mr. Karunanidhi's government in Chennai was also a coalition government. And there were no less than 34 members of the Legislative Assembly of Tamil Nadu belonging to the Congress Party, which extended support to the DMK. In other words, the point I'm making, Dr. Manmohan Singh and Dr. Karmanidhi needed each other as much as each other. So this whole logic that, you know, Dr. Manmohan Singh told Raja to be fair, to be transparent, and he couldn't do anything. He was helpless because he didn't listen to him. To me, that's an argument which does not hold water as far as I'm concerned. This is all the time we have for News Click today. We'll probably be discussing the 2G case more because this is not going to end here. It's going to go into appeals. It's going to go into arbitration. There is going to be probably suits filed against the government in various places. So we'll be, we'll be monitoring the 2G case further. Do keep watching News Click and do visit our website as well as our YouTube channel.